Ecuador may be one of the smallest countries in South America, but this place is overflowing with history and unique food. For thousands of years, indigenous civilizations have occupied the beautiful landscape of Ecuador's Pacific coast, and traditions that have been passed down for generations continue to thrive. While each region of Ecuador has a distinct flavor, cuisine of the coastal province of Manabí is one of the most recognized in the country. Known for its peanut-based dishes, fresh seafood, and diverse agriculture, it is no wonder that this place is recognized globally for its culinary excellence. Join me as we explore the largest archaeological site in the country and discover how local chefs along the coast continue to craft and perfect their ancestral recipes to this day, all for a taste of history. Wow, spectacular. Manta is the most popular city in the Manabí province of Ecuador. This coastal town boasts one of the largest commercial fishing fleets in the Eastern Pacific, so it's no surprise that seafood drives this economy here. Seven days a week, the bustling fish market in Manta offers local customers and restaurateurs a wide selection of daily catches from its main export of tuna to a local endemic favorite called camotillo. And by the way, this is a one-stop shop. The fish comes in here, it gets sold, and you find somebody that'll cook it up for you. It can't get any better like this and any fresher. And I'm sure I'll find someone that'll cook it up for me. If not, I'll do it myself. I know how to cook. <laughs> I'm in search of a fish that I don't find any place else. Unique is the camotillo. And basically, it's a fish, beautiful white meat, very flaky, and easy to prepare. The size of this fish is important. Why? Because this is what they call platero. It sits right on the plate. And the beauty is that when you come shopping over here, he, he gets it ready for you, let him do the work. <laughs> You never want to overpower fresh fish like this with seasoning. So all the chef adds is salt, pepper, and a little bit of cumin. Dust it lightly in very fine corn flour, and in the frying pan it goes. There are different sizes, and you can bigger, smaller, but this is the way that everybody here prefers it. It takes only about five minutes to cook, you know, because the filet is rather thin. The fish gets served up with deep fried plantains, known here as patacones, and just like that, from sea to table, in less than 20 minutes, you have this beautiful plate. Oh! I tell you what, it cannot get better than that. And for sure, it cannot get fresher than that. It has a beautiful flavor because it's very delicate, so it's very flaky. It's not a firm fish. This is what makes it so ideal for frying. But I had a really short night, because you, you got to come here early in the morning, this market wakes up at four, and so uh, I gotta go home and maybe take a little snooze. But first I'm gonna finish that fish. <laughs> the unique climate on the Ecuadorian coast offers a rich variety of products, like plantains, corn, and peanuts which are stable ingredients in many of the ancestral dishes. To really get to the roots of Manabí cuisine, I'm stopping in to meet Chef Rodrigo Pacheco at Boca Valdivia. Chef and his team utilize ancestral techniques of harvesting, fishing, and farming to create fresh and unique menus every day. Hello, Chef. Welcome. I just harvested uh, a couple of uh, fresh plantain from this uh, 360 degrees living pantry for <laughs> us to prepare uh, delicious recipes. Today we are going to showcase two recipes from Manabí. 
One is a sea snail ceviche with peanut called ceviche hippijapa, also using avocado. And on a side dish, we're gonna put a corviche, it's a plantain dough, deep fried, and we will fill it up with fresh fish. Fantastic. First thing, chop the sea snail that is very fresh, and we have just boiled it in water with salt. We monitor the cooking process. It's important that it's soft into the mouth because it can get really chewy if we don't cook it properly. I don't know if we can get any fresher than that because looking around here, including your laboratory behind you, Demit, how many herbs you grow here? Considering the ocean, because we also fish, we obtain over 400 products with our hands. First thing I do is uh, to add some of the salt. We must use the citrus to give the ceviche a nice, acidic flavor without putting too much fresh onion. Usually the, the ceviche comes with a, with a bigger onion, but with the sea snail, I don't want the onion to, 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 to take right? over the, that, yeah. the product, the time and the effort and the energy to bring this sea snail here. The other ingredient should be a complement for promoting and championing this sea snail. So we're gonna use some aromatic herbs, wild coriander as we call it here. So chili peppers are originary from here and it's a, it's a great way to enhance the flavors of the dish if we use it carefully. So the peanut paste has, has been done. This is very important for this recipe because hippijapa ceviche really, really needs the peanut flavor. Gotcha. What we will do now is let the sea snail marinate with the citrus and all the elements we add for a few minutes and we will start doing the fried dough for the corviche. Very fresh and, and you can feel the, the crunchiness when, when you peel it, when it's fresh, it's unique. So we have enough plantain. We'll use the rest of the onion we didn't use. We will also chop it finely and integrate it into this dough. Green pepper. I didn't know that peppers are indigenous of uh, Ecuador. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. The oldest settlement of corn found anywhere in the world has been in the coast of Ecuador. They found corn, they found fish, and they found green pepper. And this was 9,000 years ago. Muchas gracias, Noemi. So, Chef, what a perfect example. <laughs> if I got something, hey, give me some achote quick. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's beautiful. I think it's uh, one of the reasons I'm here and, and I'm not in the city is this, this possibility of getting fresh products. Now, achote, you know, is heavily used in Caribbean cooking, South American cooking, you know. And for our culture, it's sacred because it provides an, an ornamental aspect. Yeah. And also, this is uh, an anti inflammatory and it also works as sunscreen and mosquito repellent. So a lot of cultures in Ecuador have considered this tree sacred because when the skin diseases used to wipe out the whole community, they used to cover their bodies with red and that's the way they survived. And that's why this is sacred for them. Oh, look at the color that comes out of there. Of course, peanut is very important on this one as well. So we add the paste as well. It's super simple. We will do a classic corviche. We use our hands, clean, of course, and we make this dough into this shape. You don't want the openings because it'll, it'll bust open later in the oil. Yes, yes, yes. Very important. What do you think about that? Beautiful, great job. <laughs> and the tradition is to fry them, deep fry. We're gonna make a stuffing with a fresh fish, corvina or sea bass, rock sea bass. Take out one filet. So top part of the filet doesn't have any spines, so we're fine on that one. Now the chef is getting into his roots. Look at that. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Yeah, man. My favorite part. Yeah. I only use a, a couple of ingredients when I cook the fish. Only salt, some lemon, because I want to preserve the flavor of the fish. You don't want to overwork it like uh, yes. so many people. You can see how the fish is almost done. You see, yes. the, you see the, uh, the protein coming to the top. Absolutely. I was about to take it out because the heat continues. So now we, we leave it with the remaining heat and 
it will have an, a nice cooking. So we're gonna add some of the freshly harvested peanuts. Those ones are uniquely colored uh, peanuts I hadn't seen before, that's kind of interesting. Yes, uh, we have planted about nine varieties of peanuts, so today we're gonna use the maní negrito, but it's important to consider that there's a lot of variety of peanuts and each one is special for a specific preparation. There we're gonna add some of the avocado, which is typical for this ceviche, some spicy local peppers from the garden. Camote is uh, one of the most ancient potatoes. So we're frying very thin uh, slices of camote to add some crunchiness to our ceviche. Beautiful job. This is not the typical way of the corviche. The typical version, the fish will be mixed in. Mixed in. My version of the corviche, we don't hide the fish inside and we show the quality of the fish. High five on that. I hope you enjoy it. Well, I mean, I, mean, I happen to be loving sea snails to begin with, so it's an easy. Mm. Now it's marinated for a while, it's really good. You can dip it into the sauce and then have a bite. And... Wow. Now you're talking. The flavors all come together at once. I'm, I'm speechless actually. <laughs> so much flavor in there, you know? And it's so simple. Mm. Manabi kissin is no joke. That is really good Thank though. Thank you. In Manabi's capital city of Porto Viejo, the largest archaeological site in Ecuador hides in plain view. We have evidence that this part of the coast of Ecuador has been occupied for 10,000 or more years. The Mantenos were the people who lived in this area when the Spanish arrived in the early 16th century. They were a highly innovative people. They embarked on massive programs of agriculture and fishing at a scale which was unprecedented at that time. And particularly here, they turned this large mountain into a massive sacred site. Covering almost 15,000 acres, this site used to host thousands of Mantegna tribes from up and down the coast who made a pilgrimage here every year to celebrate and share in their cultural identity. In addition to expertly farming maize and other products, the Mantegnos were also uniquely adept at diving for spondylas, a prized spiny oyster that is native to the warm waters of the Ecuadorian coast. It is believed that their access to the spondylas helped protect their civilization from being conquered by the Incas who valued the shell more than gold and utilized it in many rituals. Today, the museum holds a stunning collection of artifacts to help tell the story of the last indigenous culture of this region. So, well, welcome to the house of the Manteño culture that rule over the coast of Ecuador. This place is absolutely I mean, <laughs> spectacular. Behind us, we have the stone seat of power the altar of the gods of the Mantegna culture. The symbolic expression that the gods, the moon, the sun, are ruling over the humans and the animals. When you see there, you become God. I tell you what, I wouldn't fit in there. <laughs> <laughs> the Mantegna civilization was based in two main activities, the agriculture with maize and the fishing. This is for, uh, you know? My platanos. Uh, rayar, uh, how do you say? A crater. Okay, and this is for toasting the tortillas. It's an interesting piece over here because once you cook a tortilla or anything in there, or even fish, it wouldn't stick. Yeah. It's really interesting when you think about it, they had to come up with ideas to facilitate feeding all these people. Yes. The idea. So Walt, welcome to the sacred mountain. We are going to pay an offering to ask the mountain for peace, for tranquility, for health. Eso. This is for the recipes for the day. For abundance. Muy bien, oof. The fire is talking to you. I know, always. <laughs> Hard to believe that I get to cook today next to the excavation site at Habroncillo. So, Chef, what's the first thing we're going to make? We're going to make a soup we call biche. 
The base of the soup is peanut sash and we use different vegetables, different fish or crawfish or saltfish, anything. This is a shot, uh -huh. so we're going to put some color in our soup. Onions, it's very important because it gives you a lot of flavor. Uh -huh. And some green peppers. Green peppers. Uh -huh. And it's very hot, okay? This part is very, very hot. This is peanut sauce. Almost everything is cooked with this in our food. It's a lot of strength and a lot of flavor. Yeah. Hot water. Talking about antique techniques. That's a beautiful one. We have one. this yes, yes. beautiful blender. This is do you want to try it? Yeah, this is an... Uh, you have to do it like this. Yeah, like a whisk from the way it goes by. Look at that. Okay, we had enough water and then a vitrella. Mm hmm like a northern bean. Corn. Just maize, just Sweet cut it. corn yeah. is a very fresh corn that we have. This is like a snake beans. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. It's a little bit. Camote. It's so beautiful though. Yeah, and it's so much beautiful. Flavor. It has a lot. And the color is yeah. unique. And it has a lot of starch in it as well. Uh-huh. Camote. Pumpkin. Pumpkin, Pumpkin yeah. Uh-huh. And yuca. Could be old from your garden almost, that's yeah. the right idea. We have plantains and this is going to give us sweetness on the flavor. Here we go. Well, we'll have here tuna. And for the beach, we can have tuna or shrimp or any kind of salt. Any kind of seafood, yeah. Uh -huh. Black pepper and cumin and salt. I just let it boil for a couple hours and then we're gonna have a very good lunch. But I'm standing here, I'm getting all the flavors coming to me. That's really, look at yeah. that. Yeah, it is, it's amazing. And the soup is uh, very common to make it or prepare in Easter or every Sunday or beach. <sighs> It's spectacular. Let me try a little bit of this duck first. Wow. Is that good? Oh, yeah, man. And it's so simple. Watching it right there. Let me yeah. get a piece of the uh, albacore. Important oh. ingredients are basic. You have to remember, this soup, everything is cooked on peanuts. Yeah. So all the oil of the peanuts make everything looks, looks and tastes good. I think I'm going to take you home with me in my suitcase so, <laughs> okay. I, can, so I can have it all the time. This is really, really good. And so, a taste of history. Manaví is the tierra donde la mayoría de sus platos tienen como ingrediente al maní. Manaví tiene platos emblemáticos. Tenemos el biche, pero también preparamos un corviche. Y tenemos otro plato que se llama ceviche. Y el ceviche es propio del Ecuador. Salió de Manaví hace 5,000 años, como el manjar de los dioses. Se servía el ceviche de espóndilus y se le ofrecía a los dioses. No way I could come to Manaví province in Ecuador without trying the famous ceviche. Now this one happens to be shrimp and fish, but unique is they put a little bit of ketchup on top. Now, I've never tried it before. Let me see if I like it. Mmm. Very different. But the sweet of the tomato ketchup and the cilantro, and they get a bit of fresh seafood. It's a very great combination. Mmm. Delicioso. Very good. Entonces, estas palabras tienen iche. Iche en la lengua ancestral manavita significa maní. Estamos compartiendo la historia a través de los sabores. The market of Calderón is definitely the place to go if you are looking for an authentic Ecuadorian meal. Micro farmers from all over the small town work the fields five days a week and come here to sell their goods on weekends. Not only does this give the community access to the freshest ingredients, but it also gives the food vendors upstairs the ability to create unbelievable dishes, utilizing the diverse product of the region. 
you cannot imagine how many dishes I have in front of me, but one out of all of them sticks out is the beef tongue. I love tongue in many variations. I'm gonna try the tongue from here, from Manabi. Mmm. Oh. Mm. It's really good. I like the idea to be fried plantains on the side. Oh yeah. Manabi might be known for their seafood, but don't underestimate the meats as well. This tongue, I tell you what, I've never had better. As a chef, one thing I can really appreciate about Ecuadorians is their commitment to the farm-to-table concept. At a hacienda like this one, they take it to an entirely different level, producing every kind of ingredient you can think of. Hundreds of plants and vegetables are grown on property, including coffee, plantains, and sugarcane that makes the South American-style schnapps called aguardiente. Livestock of all kinds are carefully raised and utilized in a homemade cuajada, which is known in America as cheese curd or farm cheese. It is just a spectacular sight to see. Tonga is another Manabi specialty made here fresh to order. This chicken based dish, similar to a tamale, is made up of rice, cassava, plantains, and of course, peanut sauce, wrapped together in banana leaf. This was a convenient snack for the first colonizers of the Manabi jungles, who could carry this tightly packed dish without it falling apart. Look at that. It screams of flavor already, I tell you that. Mmm. This comes together so nice. So this is a typical lunch that you could find in many of different haciendas, but this one over here is one of a kind. When the Spanish conquistadores landed in Porto Viejo in the 16th century, they of course brought pigs along with them. Not a single piece of the pig was ever wasted, and the indigenous people quickly learned the technique of making beautiful blood sausages something us Germans are quite familiar with. This local favorite called Morcia is a source of pride for the Manabi region and is still made the old fashioned way. The first step is to render the fat of the pork and get it crispy, kind of like you would bacon except smaller chunks. Combine this with some green peppers, garlic, achote and a variety of herbs. Once that is cooked, you let it cool and start getting the plantains ready. Mira, esa es la diferente. En mi casa es su casa. Usted tiene plátanos, yo no tengo plátanos en Alemania. So she creates the plantains and starts carefully mixing this with the rendered pork mixture. When you see the color changing like that, it's from the achote that she put into it. Look at the nice color. Then comes the namesake of the dish, and that is the pork blood. Mixing this in to the sausage filling gives it an unbelievable flavor and texture. Top it off with some fresh cilantro, oregano, salt, pepper, and cumin, and you're ready to stuff the intestine. It's important to make sure that the intestine is properly cleaned. So what she's doing, which is a lot of work, as you can see, tedious, and she's doing that really in a very, very old fashioned way. Once the intestines is filled, it gets poached in a vegetable stock. This one has plantains, onions, and carrots. It gives the sausage flavor, but also gives the stock a great flavor as well. It's no different than we do in uh, Black Forest as well. The stock from where the sausage is poached in, you normally eat as a soup. Same, same philosophy here. So the sausage gets poached very slowly. That's key, so it doesn't break apart, which could happen if the stock is too hot. So, when it's done, you throw it on the grill, give it a nice char, then you chop it up and enjoy. You can serve it by itself once it's cooled down. Here, you serve it with a slaw or in a soup. The possibilities are endless. Mm. Wow. Wow, what a flavor. You get the flavor of the plantains, the cilantro, the spices, beautiful. No preservatives, no additives, all natural, and a historically correct recipe. From Manabi province of Ecuador, all for a taste of history.